In this lesson, we're going to address the line toolbars. So let's go down here and select the line toolbars. And we'll go right down the list here. We've used this one already quite a few times. So snap to grid. Just draw a line with two points. Right click when you're finished. Let's back up. Next it says extended line. The line itself isn't extended. What it means is we can snap restrictions on this line now. We can make this line restricted to multiples of how many degrees you want, let's say. 20 degrees, and it's going to display the angles. So we start the line right here. It says first point, start the line. Now you notice I can set the angles in the group increments of 20, 40, 60, 80, 100. I can't pick anything in between those angles. The length doesn't matter. It can be anything you want. And I've got display the angles up here, so you can see the angles. Otherwise, it doesn't display the angles. So extended just means that it extended the snap capabilities of this line draw. And now we have a reference that tells how many degrees. So click again and start over with the next one. So that takes care of that tool. So now we're going to tour, we're going to choose this line from an angle. So basically you want to click and I bring it out here. You notice you have to pay attention to your options toolbar up here. Notice it has an angle now. We can change the degrees of the angle of that line. Let's make it 50 degrees and the length. So the line is 50 degree angle relative to the x-axis, which is zero, and it's 10 units long. So we can go ahead and, let's say, snap it to the ends of something. We'll snap it to the end of this line. So that's what that tool does. It's pretty self-explanatory. Next tool simply places a horizontal line, and we can determine the length of it. We'll leave it at 10 units. But there's a new item here we want to discuss. We haven't addressed this yet. And it has to do with the reference point on the line. If you notice this line right now, let's place it right there. It's going to the left. That's because the reference point is on the end of it. And all the other examples we've had in this course so far, we've always had the reference point on the start of the line. So the line always went to the right. So that's, there's the two ends of the line. There's also a reference point, which is the middle of the line. Now when I place this line, it'll be snapped to, let's say, the junction of two things. Well, the end points right here. These are both end points. So the middle is snapped to those end points. So all these option toolbar items, many of them, I should say, have a reference point. You can select start, middle, or end. So that's how that is used. Let's put it back to the start. That's the most common position. The reason I put it back to the start is because when you close this CAD program, the I, &I file remembers the last thing you used there. If you put it in a non-standard position, and later on, a couple days later, you're using this tool, and you start using it, and it's in the middle instead of the start, and you've been using the middle consistently, so you place the first line or two wrong before you figure out what's happening. So I would recommend you always put these reference points back to the common positions in all these units. So you don't get any big surprises unexpectedly a few days or a few weeks later. Okay, the next line type will be a vertical line. Same as the horizontal, only it's vertical. Notice the line goes up vertical and we set the units. We also have start or end reference points. Now it's the end of it is the reference point and we snap to this end point right here. And that's how we do that. Next thing is the box. We've used a box, I should say rectangle. We've used this several times. We'll snap it to the grid right now. Set one point, set the other point, and now you have a rectangle. Next tool is an easy way to make a square, amongst other things. Notice up here we have a width and a height. We can set the width and the height the same. Remember those issues we had earlier in earlier lessons trying to get a square? We don't have to do that. With this, this particular tool, now the width and height would be the same wherever I place that. So I'll have a square every place I place it. And I have the exact dimensions already. All i got to do is figure out what the reference point is going to be. And notice we've got a reference point list here. Extensive list. We can use these different parts of it. Let's use the middle of it. Notice now the reference point's in the middle. So if I snap it to this line, then the middle of it snaps to that line. 
So there's lots of nice features up here in this options toolbar if you always take a glance up there every time you select a tool because it only pops up when the tool supports it. Let's go back and eliminate, delete everything. Our drawing area is getting pretty messy. Let's go ahead and use this. Select all tool, hit the delete key, and we'll get rid of this mess. Okay, let's go back to our line tools again. We just finished the rectangle with the size. So the next choice here, angle bisector. Well, to do that, I need, I need two lines. So let's, let's make two lines right here. Let's see if it'll work in two disconnected lines. Do angle bisector, so select the first line. Okay. Select the second line. And yes, it does work, even though the lines aren't touching. It place this line 10 units long, place one of them at the point where these two lines would have intersected. So it does bisect those two lines, even though they're not physically connected. It's pretty interesting. We'll undo that. Normally, you would have the two lines, you know, connected. Normally, you may want to just use it for this type of situation. So we come down here, we do our line type. And we select the first line right here, second line up here. Notice it placed it right at the apex of the two lines. But it can be used even though the two lines don't physically touch each other. The next tool we're going to use is the parallel with the distance tool. We select that. Notice we have a distance in units and the number of lines. So let's place three lines a half a 0.5 inches away from this guy. We come down here it says choose a line arc or a circle. So we chose that circle and notice it placed three lines. If I would have gone on the other side of the line it would have placed three lines on the other side. But all those lines are 0.5 inches apart. And they're parallel with the previous lines and they're well that's it, they're parallel with the previous lines. Another choice we have here is to parallel through a point. So I can take, choose this as my reference line, and the number of them will make two of them. So this is my reference line, and now notice I can change the spacing with my mouse. If I want to freestyle, I can freestyle any place I want to. Go on the other side. So it allows you to change the spacing, spacing. It allows you to place an X number of lines at one time. Next tool requires a circle, so let's draw a couple of circles. Okay, I've cleaned up my drawing area and placed two circles. Notice this tool, tangent to a point. So I can pick a point, so choose a start point. Any place out here, we can use snap to the grid, we can freestyle, whatever you want to do, pick that point. And then the next thing says choose a circle. So we're going to choose this circle. Notice this line is now drawn from that reference point, whatever that may have been, to a tangent of this circle. And that's what that tool does. We have another tool down here that says tangent to two circles. So let's do that. Let's select that choice. Notice down here it says choose the first circle or an arc. So we'll choose this circle. So we'll choose the second circle. We'll choose this one. Notice if I put it on this side. I can get the, the tangent line to go like that. I can also get the tangent line by basically rotating around this thing to go these two places. I can also go up here, and I can go to two places. So you have four options here to place this tangent to these two circles. We'll select that option. And that's how you use that function. Next we have, it's called a relative angle. So let's say we want to um, place a new line Notice the relative angle compared to the line we're going to select will be minus 30 and the length will be 10. So it says choose the base entity. I'm going to choose this line. Notice it's going to place this other line on here. It's minus 30 degrees relative to this line we chose and the length is 10 units. And I can snap it to any place along the line. Or I can snap it to any grid point like anything else or to an end point. We'll put it right there. That's how you use that tool. It's called relative angle. 
Next thing we can do, we can place a line that's perpendicular to a reference line. So choose the base entity, which is a reference line. We choose this guy right here. Now it says set the position. Let's go to the centers of this line. And notice we have a length and a start reference point again. Not right now the start is going that way. If I change it to the end, then it'll go that way. Okay, the next item here is a polygon. Draw a regular polygon from center and corner point. So let's do that. So first it asks me for the center. Let's make the center right there. Notice up here we can determine how many corners it has. The default when you first start the program is three. So we're going to make it five so it looks like the, what's in the pictures here. So now I can set the radius and the rotation of the polygon with my point. Because it's asking for a corner point right now. So my corner point right there. Now I have placed a polygon with a center reference and one corner point. We have another polygon here with two corners. So once again we can just select a corner. It says first corner. Select the second corner and that will determine the size. Let's make this one four. Make this one three corners. So I can set this any place I want to. And once I do it then we have a three corner polygon. And last but not least, down here we have a free draw freehand. It says press to start drawing. It probably should say press and hold to start drawing because you have to hold the left mouse button. As you move the mouse around, holding the left mouse button, then you can freehand your drawing any place you want it to go. When you finish, just let go. Now you've done a freehand drawing. So that concludes all of the line tools. They're very versatile. They're used a lot throughout CAD programs, so you need to make sure you understand all of these tools.